Greetings or zip file, ladies and gentlemen, that's how I usually greet in my videos, and today in request of my UA, I'm going to dive to kind of controversial topic, uh, why the game Warno, despite its potential, really misses the mark, according to the Eastern European community. By Eastern European community, I mostly mean that one I created around my channel and content, uh, mostly uniting Ukrainians and uh, those who can speak Russian, of course, like Israel, Belarus, and Baltic Russians themselves. And that was always competitive uh, community. Like the core idea of that community was to develop a player base who actually can play well on both 1v1 and team games. So for Warno, those people are well known Homelander, Jesse, maybe Marcus, and some others just might not spot it yet, because actually a lot of people from that community are just getting bored with Warno fast and getting back to previous game of series or going to Steel Division 2 or going to even other and other games, for example, even regiments. So, in my belief, that's gonna be like the starting point. I'm not gonna talk about something complicated, it's just how I feel about game in general. And that's definitely not a hate video, since believe me, I really care little about Warno, mostly cause it, in my opinion, wasn't planned uh, or planned to be designed as a Wargame Red Dragon successor or Wargame Red Dragon, but better version, which is my beloved game, obviously. Though, since someone literally paid to request my opinion, even in, in English, thank you, and from Germany, I'm gonna give my analysis from me and my community perspective. So, to begin with, Svarno in description says it is like a wargame successor with a focus on Cold War military conflicts. It should be a hit actually, especially here in Eastern Europe where we have like a keen interest in military strategy and history. Like, most of us were literally raised on military history and toy soldiers and tanks. In my case, my family was and is actually full of people who serve military in most different branches, starting with snipers, ending with fleet and uh, AA, uh, anti-air, I mean. But that's not about me that time. And like, first of all, Warno somehow losing sense as a war simulator, just for most of us and for me especially. By war simulator, I mean like, for what people actually playing these games. In my opinion, it's about to have whole battle group down under your control and having your way of dominating enemy on the battlefield. By having your way of beating opponent, I actually really wanted to have as much as possible ways to war in game. Uh, for now, Warno offers you kinda next thing. You pick your division, it usually consists from 3 units you're going to use for the next 40 minutes attrition fight. And game design doesn't offer you complexity of docks building, like on example of the US, while playing third armored in Warno, all you buys, like units usage, are just, well, super heavy tanks, less heavy tank, infantry which fire dragon, infantry which fire 84, and some engineers which are mostly clone units, just like one weapon only change. And then your A is just three types, and you need to buy Chaparral, which can't even hit shit, you know. Then you usually proceed to Apache spam, and your air tab good on defense, but might have worse uh, attack capabilities. And what we see, there is just like no variance, instruments or creativity, as for me. And all this stuff is focused only on one single task on uh, in-game battlefield. Like attrition, fight near the center of the map. And I, for example, agree with Phoenix at the point. That's by the way, kinda another seem to talk how Warno made impossible thing of uniting Steel Division 2 players and Wargame Red Dragons players, lol. But uh, I actually want to remain on perspective of a player who plays it for actually having fun from War Simulator, if you can understand what I'm talking, because yeah, my English is not perfect, might be. And so I won't dive into some competitive view of top 1 players. So how it could be another way? In my point, it is like either developing game on a Steel Division 2 set, where from the beginning, both 1v1 and team games by game rules are defined as the War of Attrition, which World War II usually was in most battles actually. So you could add phases and skill will be measured by building the front line and putting the right troops in the right direction at the right time without unnecessary casualties. And that probably would be different but a nice game since I actually enjoyed Steel Division 2 for that. When macro and like right strategy and composition of your force can earn you a win even if your APM is like snail level. But even in Steel Division 2 you would have variety of instruments to accomplish your tasks, like how it could be in Varna. Uh, same as it was in Wargame for example, I can focus on building up strong armored forces and screening it with, uh, like screening it with a cheap cannon fodder on APCs as some universal one, or I can develop mixed forces while using expensive Bradleys with tow 2 carriers, or I'm going into forest with US Marines plus uh, SM SMAF, SMAF teams, I don't know how to pronounce that in English. And I'm getting the first or, or 
It's like in one game, I'm getting Zero first by Hilo dropping Delta Force or Light Rifle Man from Hilo. And in case of Wargame, I can combine all of that uh, the way I want. But in case of Varna, I'm forced to choose only one. And that usually just creates a problem, whereas sometimes you just don't have a proper path to victory. Like Division matchups less balanced even than Steel Division 2, since in Steel Division 2, you actually could build um, almost any div to counter any division. Like you can have access to your pan in, like in your Panzer divisions, you can have access to both heavy Panzers and Tigers, same as the cheap and lighter Panzer Force or Stungi Schutz, uh, like Stuks I mean. But in Warno, while playing Sword Armored, for example, my only option is heavy or super heavy tanks, plus infantry which suits only to be a cannon fodder for those tanks. And then you can, yeah, spam fat helicopters and defend it with F F-15s, but someone might say at least, uh, someone might say that at least it's good in 2v2 regime, but I would like to agree, but uh, it is the same problem actually, there is like scheme of Varno 2v2, like Varno 2v2 third armored, it provides us heavy tank plus convent for the spam, Apaches F-15C, and for example it getting combined with 11E in 2v2, and like only what provides 11E is a forward deploy, and then it's gonna just spam two or three types of infantry squads, ATGM jeeps or planes for the whole 40 minutes without uh, literally big variety. It's usually just two LGB bombers, and they fall, then you leave from the game. And in difference to Wargame, for example, team of US and Eurocorp decks, for example, US can open up with a heavy or a cheap tank armored force like uh, or even a uh, mobile force like dropping someone from uh, helos it can provide um, anti-air helos from the beginning or just spotting uh, from the recon helo to just uh, make the initial f-117 first strike by the way in warno it is in a british division somehow <laughs> lol and then proceeds to forest grind with marines plus mavs or building up bradley force or building up uh, adding more super heavies or buying out atacams or closing sky with Patriot plus F-14 Tomcat combination. And far in the game, US player can still bring out Longbow or A-10 or F-18 C Hornet or Cluster F-111. And that's the point you're never gonna... And like, that's the point, you're never gonna know what your opponent actually gonna do to you, like, in the game. For example, then we're going to his teammate, like, Eurocorps player. He can, like, support him with Wild Opener. Easy of big elite squads of Commando Marines for just gonna control key points with Legion 90 who blocks one kilometer around, uh, around them with high a AP Erix, or it is gonna be Eurocopter Tiger Openers, or it is gonna be IMX 10 Wheel Tank Rush, and, and it is goes even more interesting since that actually coalition of France and Germany, and wow, player might just open with full mechanized German force, but is gonna be uh, best IFV Murder 2 which is probably not gonna be even in Varno, it is gonna be just a Murder 1A3 with 80 GMs. It's just maybe a brutal force of Leopards, I is a cheaper one combined with a DGM Milan F3 net, or it can always be just plain Lecler with reserve spam. And then though the game it might develop is a cluster, is a HE, is a just uh, like buy out hovises. I mean like the artillery types uh, provided to Euro Corps are like at least three good options, like cluster artillery, uh, HMLRS or just the regular Hovitzer. So like variance and variety, what Warno really needs, but it just lost because of current game design, that probably can be fixed a bit only, at least starting from airtap, is a make it common for all nations divisions, is a just offer third armored player or any other United States div player to choose from F-16 flotilla or f 15 one or A-10 one, just let players like be creative at least in something, at least in airtap. That's what uh, I would say. And that might, uh, might just one part of the puzzle, why I can't enjoy Varna fully. Uh, same as a lot of other players. Next time actually not gonna even do further game examples, cause all of the game design problems are coming from just one thing. Developers, Ugen systems, are not talking what they are doing. The level of communication these players might be on the lowest level I have ever seen, even the smallest indie studios at least saying what they eventually want to do. Like, do Eugene answered question at least once, what is the ideal state of the game? 
Like, why, where, where is the point when they say, yeah, that's what we wanted to do, then we then service working properly, ideal one one balance is achieved or at least works as intended, single player giving one of the most impressive campaigns about US-Soviet confrontation since World and, World and Conflict game, for example. You can dislike me, not agree with balance, but that's the question which should be raised to Eugen like every damn second. The question which was raised by Rangru, what the fuck are you doing, Eugen, it's just a key. Like, maybe with understanding of what they're doing, half of questions to game design and why don't make this like my in my beloved game would perish. Because for now we have Army General, which not giving challenge at all, just check regiments for proper single player experience actually. Moreover, second campaign literally copies the first one on northern flank, and what you offered in the next campaign is like to replay it again, but with another three or four boring flanks included. Like three or four just lanes in Army General. And 1v1 and 2v2 actually being the strongest sides of the game, but only being fun due to uh, actually skill or, or level of players playing there. Like, but as said, due to poor variations, this is gonna be boring anyway. Just check like latest 2v2 tournament games from perspective of a viewer. It's just a static combat with almost the same divisions in the same matchups. Forward deploy plus M1A1 or double M1A1 spam or T80 spam plus grad spam. Wow, like, come on, guys. And 3v3 and 4v4 are also mostly being filled with new players, and due to game design usually comes to endless blob versus blob fights. And plus a lot of those new players are playing other maps that are not designed for such quantity of players, and believe me they gonna play like that forever same as it was in Wargame Red Dragon. It is also gonna lead to imminent uh, online drop uh, in the future. And I'm going to say just a little about NV10. Since I actually played a lot of Destruction and then with an Asgard servers, like the, that was a big desert map uh, in Wargame, and it was actually fine regime. Like, what I just recommended is to be players to be advised that you can't develop your skills there. And it's also f only fine to play it until it's act about actual 10 with 10 maps and actual level of units in your hands. So, due to game design issue with variety of units, it might turn to be actually still boring. So it's just gonna be bigger blob versus bigger blob uh, fights from 3v3 and 4v4 accordingly. Uh, but I might at least understand that people just wanna have fun with their KDA double smash and 99 tanks on the battlefield. So I'm repeating again, by playing 10v10 you not playing war game how it was in tendons uh, in the past. It's just rather custom map like for StarCraft, Starcraft 2. And like in that situation I'm going to drop anyway. Like, when I was recording, it was the middle of a day in Ukraine, like 1 p.m., and there was like uh, 900 people online, there was just usual Cyrus lobby, which is not even suited for 3v3, like usually, and just two other lobbies. The only way to fix it is actually to add matchmaking with ELO-based system, and I would even consider the remove of custom lobby system for a time, just to make players play matchmaking. It can actually, first of all, start to up the skill of players, and also just improve their experience. Yeah, like, people gonna say that it's still possible to smooth, but first of all, you just literally have tools to ban by IP, and probably even by components of your PC, uh, but the report system just don't exist, by the way, and usually people who get banned are usually just made someone of the strike team, aka French butt leakers angry, uh, since those guys just somehow having actually uh, better access to report someone in a convenient way and usually the guy also going to be banned on a large amount of time. Like in case of my teammate Jesse got banned for a month for team killing in 10v10 uh, even if since the game was won. And uh, I mean for the first time team killing it's usually like 30 minutes in most games or just server kick or just temporarily ban for a day. But if only Eugen would be so good at banning actually map hackers in a Wargame Red Dragon by the way. And uh, yeah, I forgot there is just no damn big red button on menu which says click me if you use, if you see a cheater, like, where is the report button? <laughs> it's not so, like, hard to develop, or at least, like, make a report ticket system in Discord, like, uh, the most easy way. Like, uh, are guys just lazy to do that or what? I don't understand. And talking about main menu, by the way, why it's some tent and why it is white? Like, guys might imagine, but most RTS players are actually playing at evening or night, and I don't want to get flashbanged all the time. Uh, plus, why there are some, like, stupid things, like this white list which says Belarusian Institute of Social Management, which actually dates uh, 2013 year. And speaking about atmosphere, as said above, it is Eastern European community view on Varno, 
And Varno often falls into cliches and stereotypes, missing the nuance and depth that actually serious scenes deserve, like what are Berlin Commando with uh, Nighthawks and uh, Mirage Force flying across whole Eastern Germany in some way to help out those f encircled forces in Western Berlin? Like, as said, give me US faction where I can choose uh, Nighthawk as my core unit, not that, like, Circus Div Division. And what are the design of Soviet troops with baseball hats and aviator sunglasses, even in those divisions which never was to Afghanistan? Voice lines are also usually lack serious atmosphere that what mix makes game to meme sometimes. And again, somehow I gonna compare it to regiments whereas there are at least dark UI actually. And voice lines might have near zero memes are actually make you more focused on uh, what you actually playing. And so it's kind of personal preferences, but it is a fact that Varno couldn't develop something actually stylish rather tastelessness. And especially when it comes uh, that we're getting Zagrat Otriat with Eastern German Reservists, National Guard, Apache Reservists, uh, like how in logically Soviet Zagrat Otriat would uh, talk to Germans. And actually, you know, that's probably all. It is what it is. Tell me what you think in the comments.